every time we go to North Carolina, we have to stop at the Coswell County rest area. And look at the babbling brook. The babbling brook. It goes blah, 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 blah. As opposed to the dribbling. Not in a bad way. Shut up. The Coswell County rest area. Enjoy our good friend babbling a brook. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. Daryl, Ricky, Sim the Global Podcast. We are headed to Charlotte, North Carolina. Heroes Con! Heroes Con 2022. Heroes First Heroes Con since 2019. I know, it's crazy. Except for the little mini con they had last year. I don't think that counts. I mean, That's not, not a full blown. Opinion. Heroes Con. And, and what is this year? It is the 40th anniversary yes. of Heroes Con, which is exciting. The big 4 0. The big 4-0. So, this is exciting. I'm guessing there's going to be a ton of people there. I've already made my first purchase. So, this is exciting. I got this. I know. Yeah, it's going to be bagged and bored shortly. Don't worry. Don't worry. I may get it graded. Thinking about it. It was free, but the lady charged him $20 just because you it was You know him. what? I mean, I thought it was a deal. It was a bargain. Lady that was cleaning the uh, the uh, rest stop. Yeah. Charged him ten yeah, bucks. I, I know you guys are worried. Uh, the rest stop still there. Oh wait, you already got to see the rest stop, which we love every year. The babbling brook. The babbling brook. So, um, so Rick, what are you looking for this way again? Uh, well, I usually just shop and meet a few creators but I think I'm going to focus on trying to meet more people this year we've had way too many of our uh, amazing creators in the industry pass away in the last few years and I have not had a chance to meet said people so yep. Yep. I'm going to try to focus on some of these folks I brought a bunch of books I'd like to get signed so today is probably going to be mainly that but I don't have any like major wants right now of course there's always stuff that I want that I'm looking out for but I, I think it's whatever strikes my eye that I can get a great deal on. I'm, I'm probably going to go for, but I'm more focused on like actually meeting folks and trying to get some signatures, have some good conversations, making some memories. That's mainly what I want to come this year for. Yep. Hanging out with uh, Andy and Billy. Yes. So that that's always going to be fun. Bonafide Comics for those who don't know. Yep. And uh, okay. J Jason Hamlin from Central Vortex is going to be yeah. at the show. So hopefully we mm -hmm. get a chance to hang out with him too afterwards. We'll see. Um, my friend, Mr. Gretzky uh, will be here at the show. I'm excited. It'll be the first time I meet him in person. Nice. So hopefully there'll be a few more... Um, people uh youtube people that we can hang out with it's not gonna be like the florida crew that just attacks the cons in, in mass mass oh it's it's so many of them down there man it's it's a great about mega con? yeah oh yeah yeah i need but to in mass those. meaning a whole bunch of the youtube creators uh um, joint are there together not, oh, yeah, not, not the florida people in massachusetts okay so what I'm going to be looking for uh, Batman 111 from 1957. Been looking for that for a while. Nice. And looking for it on YouTube, uh, I saw someone that had one. So I, I, I was looking through their stuff and I saw Woodsy Owl number one. Oh, heck yeah. That's so if I find that in, in pretty good condition, I will get one of those. Bow, bow, bow. My man, meal. And. Love it. There's a few other things I'm kind of looking for, but those two are like towards the top of the list, then the Woodsy Owl should be cheap if I do find one. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's not something you see every day, so. Well, I mean, you can find it on eBay for like 10 bucks. Oh, well, then. It's, it's, not, it's not like a $500 book or anything okay. like that. Woodsy. So it's one of those things that if I happen to come across, that would be awesome. But um, I don't know. I'm excited. I am too. Um, 
I don't know, I'm switching gears a little bit this year on collecting. I'm still doing my superhero stuff. I'm working on my ASM run and uh, X-Men, but I think I'm, I'm focusing a lot now on just stuff you don't see every day and like old school DC and Marvel horror. Like I've really been getting into a lot of the horror books here lately. So um, we'll see what I find. I mean, I'm, um, there's, there's a bunch of different ones that I've seen that if I can find in good enough condition, I'd like to pick up. It's so many of those have those black covers yeah. and they're really hard to find without like some very obvious color breaking spine six, you know, stuff like that. So we'll see. It depends on what I come across. And of course, I'm always looking for, I collect the uh, Marvel graphic novels from the eighties. So I'm trying to complete that set of like 75 books. I think I've got about 14 more to go. So of course I'll be able to look out for those as well. Um, I think here is where I picked up, you know, a good chunk of those over the last couple of years that I went. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to run across some of those. We'll see. I'm just excited for the experience. From my understanding, from talking to Billy when him and Andy were setting up yesterday, it's more vendors there this year than they've had previous years. Um, that whole area where they had like the car set up, the you know, the when you go in way, way over to the left. Way over to the left. Yeah. That whole area is filled with vendors now. Wow. Yeah. So he said it's supposed to be like bigger and better than ever. And nice. um, I'm really hoping that this year a lot of people don't like cancel last moment as far as creators, artists, you know, writers. There's a bunch of people I want to see. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, navigate the people and, and actually get to the tables and meet them. We'll see how it goes. Um find out i'm excited i just the experience overall is going to be amazing to me just to be able to like hang out with friends be around comics and creators all day i'm very very excited about it another book i was just re remembering is uh, uh sergeant fury i want to get i think it's issue 89 the where he first got the patch oh okay that's another one that i'm definitely looking for i think it's i think it's 89 all right so i hope that i can find that here as well that would be really cool uh, lots more to come I don't know what we're talking about, but you'll see a lot from the con. I oh, should try to take some videos. Obviously, um, cosplayers, they always have great cosplay down here. Yep. So that's going to be awesome. I plan on taking plenty of pictures this time around. I'm usually so like overwhelmed with everything that's going on. I yep. forget to pull my phone out and take pictures, but I really want to get some good cosplayers picks this year. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to take a few videos here and there of you know, some of the stuff that goes on. I'd like to hit a few panels this year. I've never done panels. At, I've um, never done a panel here. So I think that would be interesting to you know see who's there and who's talking and you know it, it's nice. It's a you really get more from what I understand. Just I mean, I've seen a few panels at other shows, but you get more of a like intimate moment with these folks versus when you go to their tables because you don't really get much time. Yep. You know they basically sign a few books, you get to say a few words, and that's it. These panels are nice because you get to talk to them or talk, have them talk for a while and you can ask questions, you know, stuff like that. So you get to learn a little bit more about them, which is always cool. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. We'll be back shortly. All righty. Bye. Look at all these humans. Look at all of these humans. Look at them. I'm digging this guy. Look at everybody. Going into Heroes Con 2022 Saturday. It's a mass of humanity. Oh, this guy's awesome. Are you having fun yet? Yeah, this is awesome. Right. Up, down, up, down, back. Oh, if you look outside, there are people that are walking. Those people are in line too to go in. That's like with an extra zero, 17,000. I'm saying 17. That's what I'm saying. 17,000. Yeah. Get ready to go around the turn. Thanks, slows down a smidge. Don't want, don't want to have a wreck. Oh, we, we, got, we got the rubbing is racing. NASCAR Museum right across the street. I just realized I still haven't seen Peasy. JPZ Inc. is in the house somewhere. Well, I think he's outside the house right this moment. Maybe he's his shirt. Dude, his there's your shirt. Man, dang it. From yesterday. That's yesterday. That's true. 
said, all them outside. Why do we stop? People can't figure out oh. turn styles. That guy with this got a bunny mask shirt on. That's a good read. I saw a guy. I'm assuming it's about somebody with a bunny mask killing people. It's it's a it's a rabbit. Yes. Silly rabbit. Robin Hood, the old Robin Hood shirt. How you doing? Big line cat, we just passed in line. Hey, there's Greg Capullo. Oh, no, not Greg Capullo again. We, we turned right over there a second ago. There's people outside. Where? You can't see her now. Oh. Hey. That's pretty cool. We have some of the mushrooms from uh, Mario over there. It's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, I guess. A little bit of convention center stuff going on here in Charlotte. North Carolina. Hey. Line Con. Line Con 2022 is still rolling, 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 rolling. Look at all the humanoids. Good morning. There's the show floor down there. Down the escalator. Watch Daryl fall down the escalator as I give him a slight push. But don't, but don't, but don't, but don't. Hey, Batman's here. Right there. Where? I don't know what he's doing. Looks like he's carrying around a water bottle. Maybe it's got like the beer gas in it. Maybe it's something for Mr. Freeze. Because he gets thirsty. Yeah. All right. You're about to walk in. We're going to go say hi to Billy and Andy first. Yeah. You know what? We're going to go jump in that line for. Uh, well, I mean, I, I can walk right past them. Okay. Here it is. Heroes Con 2022. And, and look, look, I'm filming the guy filming me. You film the guys filming the guy. So that's kind of cool. It's dual filming. <laughs> I made sure of that. Where's the bomb? It's the toilet at the hotel. The bomb. And we got lots of comics over here, comics over there, comics everywhere. Comics everywhere. People running. Running for wrist. Running for wrist. Yeah. We'll get over to Bonafide Comics. Uh, is it aisle 800 or 700? Yeah, 800, I think. Yeah, 700. Yep. Here we come. You can see the banner over there. Go follow Ricky over there. And we, we got Billy over here. And here is the, the legend himself, Andy from Bonafide Comics. Hey, hey, Andy, say hello. Hey, are you live streaming? No, it's not live. It's gonna be it's gonna be put on in post. But I will I will take a little video, a little live video for this. For the gram, come over here and get some of these good books. No, because they all got mixed in. For the good deals. From Andy. All right.
right, guys, we're on the way back from Heroes Con 2022. It was a blast. An absolute blast. Um, went by really quick. Way too fast. Uh, and we, we were talking earlier. Uh, it was three days. If it was four days, we would still need more time. Yeah, it's so much to see there. There's so much to do. I mean, we went, we shopped pretty much the whole time, hung out, talked to creators, got some sketches, you know, stuff like that, but still did no panels, which yep. there were plenty. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I probably would have liked to have gone and sit to, you know, listen to people talk, and it's just, it's just not enough time. And then, you know, there's always the after stuff, too. I mean, like, you know, you got Drink and Draw on Friday night, and then Saturday night you got the art, art auction. But we were so beat from, like, just the day's worth of walking around that place. We didn't even do those this year. Yeah, it was uh, – and, and not – they've added so many more booths this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know they said they, they had added some, but when you go in there, it is significantly more. Yeah, I think so. I think there was probably easily another 40 vendors in there. Yeah. Easily. And it was just, it was great. Oh, no. Well, it's, okay, okay we're only sprinkling. We, we were just talking before we started recording <laughs> that just about every time we come down here, go to North Carolina, it rains. Every time. It's been every yeah. single time yeah, we've come time. to North Carolina for any reason. It's raining, like pour down rain and not just like spring wind. Yeah, and we don't have that that many more miles before we get to the Virginia line. And it, and I said, yes, you can see. It's starting to rain. It's starting to rain. Uh, we're not having pour down yet. Yet. He hasn't hit the windshield wipers. Hasn't needed to yet. No. I think I just won't hit them just, out, just, just for, you know, saying yeah. it didn't, I don't, I didn't need them. I didn't need them. I just not. <laughs> Uh, one of the big things, uh, back to the con, yes. that, that happened right as we were getting ready to leave. Very excited. Larry Hammer. Very, very excited. So I went on day one, probably about an hour after I got there, and went to, went to Hammer's booth, and he had a couple people in line. But I'm thinking, you know, hour in, it should be fine to go and try to get a commission. I know it would probably, probably be fine to get it by Sunday when I had to leave. Well, I got there and I was ninth on the list for commissions. So I asked him if he'd do a snake eyes for me. And um, he said, yeah, I should be able to get to that by the end of the convention. He said, check back with me tomorrow. I should have it done. Yep. So I checked back with him on Saturday. And I didn't check back with him until about, I don't know, three o'clock in the day. Like I gave him time. He had not even gotten to like his third or fourth commission yesterday, but like halfway the con was yep. over. I'm like, there's no way I'm getting this sketch. So I went back and checked with him again right before I left and he had done one more. So he was getting a little closer, but yeah. he was still only on four at that point or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he asked me, he said, what did you want again? I told him I wanted the snake eyes. He wanted to know if I wanted the, you know, version one or version two. Of course I wanted version two with the visor, um, you know, and he's like, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I see what I can do. And then went back today and uh, he still had not gotten to it this morning. When I got there, I went first thing to see him. He still hadn't started on it. So I'm thinking to myself all day, I'm not getting this commission, it's not happening. Because he's not one to do them and then mail them to you. He'll do them while he's at the con and then after that he doesn't worry about it anymore. So uh, went back, we had to leave about three. So we checked back about 2.30 and he uh, had, was just getting back about 2.40 from a break. And uh, I saw a snake guy sitting there. He had pulled it out. And I'm like, well, that, that looks like mine, hopefully, but it probably isn't. And uh, he said, which one did you want again? I was like, oh, God, here we go. Yep. So I told him, and uh, the Brett, the guy that was helping him, uh, Brett Carreras, he runs the uh, Richmond Comic Con, and he was helping him. And Larry are really good friends. He was helping him, so uh, he... Uh, he said, I know, he said, I think you're only on number five or six. And Larry said, well, I, I remember you. I skipped a couple of commissions so I could get to yours because I knew how bad you wanted it. And I was like, man, that is amazing. Yep. So it was, it was a snake eyes that was laying there. Rough sketch, not 100% completed. You know, he did it to about the, I don't know, mid calf area on the feet, but the rest of the figure is there. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with it, very happy. 
I have a great experience every time seeing him. Um, so I was, I was extremely happy. I was thinking I was going to leave a little defeated if I didn't get that from him because who knows? I mean, next year he might not be around. So I definitely wanted to make sure I got something from him, which I've got another piece. He did a Wolverine versus Sabretooth for me years ago uh, at Big Lake when I met him. Uh, I think it's been two or three years ago. But I, I wanted something G.I. Joe related this time. So very happy to have gotten that. I'm not using my windshield wipers, folks. <laughs> but um, <coughs> I'm gonna have Ricky uh, send me a picture of it, yeah. and I, I'll, I'll I'll put it in right here so uh, so everyone can see. It looks great. It does. It does. It's really really sweet. It's funny. So, he cracks me up because he you know he's, he always says I'm not an artist. I'm mainly just you know an editor and a writer. You know I'm the one that comes up with the ideas. He says, but you know, people like my drawings, so he said that's the only reason I still do them. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know, I get that. You're doing this for the fans, and I love it. That's one of the reasons I like him so much is that he is all about, you know, the, the fans. He's always about giving a good experience. He's he can be a little cantankerous at times. That's the word, right? Can cantankerous. Can, cantankerous. Yes, yes. Yeah. He he can get a little moody at times, but uh, I've never had nothing but good experiences with him. Yeah, I used the windshield wipers. There it was. Yep. Yeah. We are still. The streak is unbroken. The, the, the streak is unbroken. Now, it when it comes to time. to drawings, I unfortunately did not have the same luck. Nope. I was trying to get um, Green Lantern from Daryl Banks, and unfortunately, uh, I didn't try. I didn't go the first day because there was no one over there at his booth so the next day I, well i mean he was there but there was no no one going over there so the next morning i went over and he's like well uh come back come back in a few hours come back in a few hours he's like well you know come back in a few more hours and he just he just has too much stuff to do and so he didn't get to do it yeah uh, amanda connor jimmy palmiotti i want to get a remark on a book from them and what they were doing was because they had so many people there for them for signatures yeah and they just don't come uh to the east coast a lot well let me rephrase that to to heroes con right so they do more like new york comic con stuff yeah, like that yeah like they're like really 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 big, really really big shows really big show. i mean this yeah, is not a small show by any stretch oh no heroes is the biggest show i ever go to That's yeah it's the biggest show i've ever been to and and so their handler what they were trying to do is is trying to get as many people through as possible because um, they really want to meet as many people as they can. So I get that. Yeah, it seems and like they actually take the time to talk to folks. Which they, is nice. they do. They do talk to a lot of folks, and which again, really cool. So I understand. I'm not mad or anything. It's just a little disappointed. Yeah. You, you know, it's like when your mom says, "I'm not mad at you." I'm, I'm just disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> just breaks your heart. Uh, Amanda, Jimmy, a little disappointed. It's hard. <laughs> I really did want that, just that little little sketch remark. Well, on. you wanted originally a full sketch. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I knew that, that, that wasn't going to happen. With a remark. Yeah, I mean, just, just a remark on a blank cover, I would have been down with. I get it. No worries. So, hopefully they'll come back next year and maybe I can get it. I actually left it with uh, one of my friends. He said, hey, man, I'll try, but, you know, obviously no guarantee. If not, again, no worries. Can you reach what you got today when you were across from Daryl Banks' line? It's right there. Let me smack it that head. That's fine. Would be the first time. All right. Oh, man. Oh, sorry. Yep. Sorry, world. Okay. We were totally prepared for this. Totally, completely. Yeah. Well, I, I had not prepared to even consider putting anything on right here because I don't have room to hold the phone and to do this. Well, I and, and, try to hold and he's phone. trying to drive and I don't like that. Well, we found this guy, his name was um, Mike uh, Mez Phillips. Yes. Mike Mez Phillips. And, by Mez. and I saw this and I had to pick it up. It is Ray Uke from Death Note, original art. And uh, Ricky, Ricky, you got I got a Mr. Sinister from him. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's so good. I, it, I didn't hit a ton of indie artists, but he was one that I saw. I was like, okay, I have got the stuff. He's done some really good stuff. And 
I, I picked up this print of Harley and uh, Poison Ivy and old school uh, Geisha outfits. If I'm pronouncing it right. Yes. Geisha. 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 And you also picked up a Catwoman from it too. Right? Yeah, I got a Catwoman um, blank cover uh, artwork on my uh, uh, Mez. Absolutely amazing. I actually sent that off to CBCS. Yep. So did you take pictures of it before? I uh, I did not. Oh man. Yeah, I know. The video yeah, I'm, I did not even think about that because uh, I kind of should have done that. Yep. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, but didn't. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, woulda, woulda, woulda. I did get a, a Daryl Banks autograph on a Green Lantern 50. Yes. That glow in the dark cover. I just picked up one, so at least I can say hey, I got an autograph. And I sent that away, and, I was, and right after I filled out the paperwork, I was like, why did I send that one? Because it's not it's not a high grade copy. Right. So I'm like, eh, it is what it is. It's gonna be forever encapsulated. Yes. Gonna be fine. Unless unless we're like Andy and just one day say, you know, I'm just gonna rip this. this was it a Dick Tracy? <laughs> no, he got a. Um, it was a Jeep cover. Um, All American Forces or something like that. He got it. It was like I mean, basically like a '50s book. Graded and it had a restored grade, so it says it's a small amount of color touch on the cover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't see it anywhere on the cover, so he was like, I'm just gonna crack it and look and see if I can see the color touch on it. Just, you know, very expensive book, and he's like, ah, it doesn't need to be in the slab. So yeah. Andy seems to do that a lot with his books. He, he, he does, most of them. he does crack a lot of books out. Well, Andy's a lot like me, he wants to read the books. So if they're already in a slab when he gets them, he'll just crack them and read them, and then he's not worried about putting them back in a slab. He knows what grades they are. And it's something that he's going to put in his PC. He doesn't care if it's great or not. I think the only thing that he's uh, really kept in that condition is those uh, the, uh, the Teen Titans run. Mm -hmm. He got all nine eights of yeah. I think he kept that in the, in the uh, slabs. But. Yeah, um, and uh, that issue too, and a new stand 9.8. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. He had a book that I really wanted to get. Um, I can't remember what it was, but it, it was just the fact that it was from 1947. And it was... the detective. No. Uh, no. It was, a, it was another book. It was 1947, and it was a 7.0. Yeah. That's impressive. And I was just like, I just want that. Because the art on it looked looked really, really great. And I can't remember what it was now. It was the principle of a book being um, 75 years old and being a 7.0. Yep. I think by the time we get to 7, uh, 75, we're not going to yeah. be a 7. I, I am already about a 6.5. I think I'm, I'm hitting like about a 5, 5 and a half at the moment. <laughs> If you, can, if you consider all of my dings and splits and, yeah. and spine ticks, I got them spine ticks, man. Yeah, all the spine ticks are bad. Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, gosh. You want, and the thing is, I, he wanted 1200 for it. Yeah. I don't think that is high at all, even if it's yeah. just, it, it, a common... He would have done you better on that. A common know. issue from that long ago. I mean, come on. I might message him and see if he, he will do some install payments on it. Con after the con. Yeah, the post con con. Yeah. Just He's got some stuff I'm interested in too. So that She Hulk, um, She Hulk book, I cannot remember the issue number, but it's got, um, you remember when he had up on his wall was a She Hulk, she -Hulk book and it had um, her holding, gosh, now I can't remember exactly what it looked like. It wasn't the beach ball. No, it was a later issue in that run and it was so unconventional from the rest of the run. That, um, I don't know. Shoot. I'll, I'll have Sen to get Sensational that deal. She Hulk? Yes, it was. Okay, so that's the second the second one. I was it Sensational or was it? Savage. No, it, it Savage was, was first run. It was, I think it was Savage. I think it was the Savage run, but it was so unconventional from the rest of the artwork. It was like a dark cover. It had like gritty, you know, like, I want to say it had like a picture of death in it or something. I don't know. Anyway, it was neat. I'm thinking about messaging him about that one to see what he wants for it. I did some trading with Andy, of course, if y'all watch the podcast, uh, you'll see, you know, you'll see what I, I got in trade, but uh, I've got to dig out the Batman 181 that I've traded him for all that stuff. 
that's, you know, normally I would not get rid of a 181 that's still got the center fold in it and it's pretty awesome, but I, I did two tape pulls on that book and I'm so mad at myself for doing it, I just want to get rid of it. Oh, yeah. Squeaky, squeaky. Yeah, yeah, he, he got rid of that out of pure anger every time he looks at it. Yeah, pretty much. I know I'll probably never get another copy now as expensive as that one, yeah. but, you know, it's okay. Because I remember seeing um, when we went to Richmond one time, somebody had 400 on the mm -hmm. and it was, in, it was in pretty good shape. And you're just like, oh, that's a little too much. Yeah. You're just like, oh, $400, I can get one that's got half a cover. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, th I think he ended up giving me about 1000 or 1100 in trade for mine. Which is crazy mm -hmm. with two tape pulls. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because um, like I say uh, GSX. Oh man, I I, I remember seeing a um, an eight point zero and someone wanted nine hundred for it. I was like, that is way too much for that book. Yeah, now it's, now, it's now, funny. now if you get like a, a one, you might be paying nine hundred dollars for that. Okay, it makes sense right now because I, I don't. So think how I'm, long ago was it the garbage shop was open? I've been six, five, six years now. Yeah, I think about six years. All right, so five or six years ago, our friend Chris Garvey closed his shop up and before he closed. He had, um, he had an X Men 94 that, in my opinion, probably would have graded out an 8 or an 8.5, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Had it for uh, 275 Yep. I thought that was too much compared to the value of it at the, that point in time. Yep. Like, I felt like I was going to be overpaying if I bought it. I wish every day now that I had bought that issue from him. Because that book now is, it's two grand, easy, at least two grand. Yeah, I've got one getting graded right now, and I'm hoping for um, a three or four, something like that. Is that the one you got for me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. My parking lot copy. <laughs> yeah. That's a funny story. You want to hear the story? I mean, well, that's why I'm on the phone and shut down. All right, so... There's a comic shop in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, called Telegraph, and that's where I get my monthly bullet hole from. So I go up there once every few months and pick them up. And uh, this guy and it took a, a, a small collection of books into the shop to get them to look at them and see what they he would offer them for. Them. Well, while I was there, he he was finishing up his deal with them, and he kept a couple of books out that they didn't want to give him the money he wanted for. One of them was that X-Men 94. And uh, he proceeded to take it with him and walk out the door. And I was just like, I'm going to go out here and see what he wants for that book. <laughs> just, just chase him out the door. So I did. I literally chased this dude out the door. And he got almost to his car. And was like, hey, buddy. Hey, uh, I see you trying to sell that X-Men 94. What are you looking to get for it? So he told me. And, I mean, it was, it was a good amount lower than what it was worth at that point in time. But they didn't even want to give him a quarter of what it was worth. Yep. So I think I ended up giving him about seventy-five dollars worth of value, seventy-five percent value on the book, which he was happy with. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't a, a great copy, like you know, like he's saying it probably may be great out of three or four or something yeah. like that. I mean, we're 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 estimating three point five. We're estimating three point five. It's an X Men ninety four at this point. I wish I hadn't sold it to Daryl. So I know <laughs> I do that a lot. It's like, oh, I'll upgrade this comic later. I'm really going to stop that one day. I will eventually find my upgrade before I sell my other comic. Yeah, I've, I've tried to tell you that before. Well, I don't listen to you. That, that's you 100% true. You don't make I, I'm sense. Like, I'm like, uh, Hulk 181, signed four times. 3.5. Don't yeah. sell that. Are you stupid? Now, I mean, you know, I needed a heat pump at that point, so I was yeah. trying to get some money together. Yeah, you get a blankie. A blankie. Get a blankie. Yeah, I don't think you've ever lived in a house with no heat or air. It's kind of miserable in both uh, seasons uh, that we have in Virginia. Yeah. We don't have four seasons. We really don't. We have, it. We we, have two. Back in the day, we did. Not anymore. Not anymore, no. But, I mean, all in all, this con was absolutely amazing. Yep. Um, there was a couple things that frustrated me, and I can go into that in a minute. I don't mean to interrupt you, but... Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. Jump in. So, all right. They did... For the most part, Heroes did a really good job of mapping out where folks were in the booklet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E except for everybody I wanted to see. So, uh, <laughs> is it, Ricky wants to see Jim Starlin. <laughs> let's put him somewhere no where nobody can see him, period. So, they said he was in booth like 531 to 533 or something like that. I look on the map, 
it skips over 531 and 533 in the map. Like it's, it's in there literally nowhere. So I walk up in that area where it would be and cannot find him for nothing, but yet I hear people walking around saying, oh yeah, the Starling was great, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, where are y'all finding him? Oh, he's up there, he's up front. Can you please take my hand and walk me up there? Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. And then uh, I wanted to see Roy Thomas on Saturday. And, oh, here it comes, Roy. here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to enter Virginia. I hope you guys can see that sign right there. Welcome to Virginia. Welcome to Virginia. Virginia Here's is for the love us. That's, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Just throwing it out there, ladies. Throwing it out there. Throwing it out there, ladies. And I wanted to see Roy Thomas. I wanted to get him to sign my 181 and a couple of them. Not 181, but my 180 and a couple of other books. And, uh, oh, Hulk 180? Yes. <laughs> the, first, the first appearance of Wolverine? Yeah. Okay. That's my opinion. But, you know, that's, <laughs> Uh, according to everybody else yeah. in the world, it is not. Well, according to the people that apparently count. Yeah, the ones that do that, the I know Billy, Billy was also saying he thinks that one day they'll they'll push it to 180. But I'm hoping so. Yeah. There's a, there is a lot of folks that are, that's pushing that because to me a cameo is one panel, small panel, no speaking, just yeah. a glimpse, an image, whatever, kind of yeah. like with Venom. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 299, 299 is his yeah. cameo. He has a small little at the end of it. And then 300 is where you really see him. Yep. For God's sakes, folks, 180 has a full panel of Wolverine jumping out, the whole panel, speaking part, and then telling who he is at the end of that panel. How is that not his first freaking appearance? I'm trying to keep it PC over here for your, for your podcast. Yeah, I, th I think my PC means PG. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying to keep it uh, good for the littles. But that just that just blows my mind. So anyway, getting back to the things that frustrated me about the con. Um, the, I want to meet Chris Claremont. If I had wanted to stand in line for five hours, I would have been able to meet him. I mean, we got there right when it opened every single day. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got down there, there was a hundred freaking people in line. Yeah. Um, and, and he is chatty. It, and that's why his law line takes five hours to get through mm -hmm. because he will talk to everyone but Daryl for 25 me. minutes. Uh, which is cool. That's kind of experience, you know, most of us want is to be able to talk to a creator like that. But that's a little too long. And that's another thing that bugs me. These people that get like 75 books signed. I one hate person. when you see the wagon in line. Yeah, because you know you're going to have to wait a while. I mean, uh, I, I, I would tell you, you know, uh, what um, Connor and Paul Miotti, how they were working signatures in before remarks? Yeah. I want the um, artists or their handlers, if you see somebody with a wagon, they want more than three books signed, let everybody that wants one or two in in front of you. Yeah. And then those people have to wait then, and if there's if they have time to, to work in those people, they will. If they don't, tough. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's those all are about flippers. money, though. Those are for, flippers. But it's also a lot about, but, with a lot of these creators, it's about the money. So if one guy's right. got 75 books, that's 75 times if they're charging $10 or $20 a piece. It's a lot of money. Right, but if you also work in 80 people ahead of that person, yeah. or because a lot of people are leaving the line because of this person. Yeah. I so, know. I get it. I mean, I, I to me, I think that would be better. But again, yeah, what um, So I, I really, I'll say this too. I miss the old school days of where if you go to meet an artist and you want to get a signature, if they personalize it to you, it's free. Yeah. There's not a lot of them out there doing that anymore. And it used to be they had a tip jar right there. You just throw them some cash in there and you move on. And I mean, that kind of gives them a little bit more incentive to like want to come to these shows. They're getting a little bit of money out of it from, from us or whatever. But um it's like, who was the guy? Golden. Michael Golden. Yeah, Michael Golden. Across from us. Yeah, literally straight across from us. Straight across from us at the booth, kind of diagonal a little bit. I, I had two books I wanted to get him to sign. Um, and I went over there and asked how much his prices were. He was charging $20 a signature. Now, granted, Golden's done some great work. Yeah. But there's people like Larry Hama that I totally respect more because I took him... Well, four books now to get signed in the last couple of days and he charged me nothing to, to get it because I wanted it signed to me and on top of that like you know 
will let me take a picture with it. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah, I got a picture with, with him also. Yeah. Because uh, I, I bought his, what do you call it, his first? What was that? It was like a commemorative issue? Yeah. I think that's what they called it. It's a commemorative issue. Got it back here. Uh, Gotcha. Uh, yeah, it's going everywhere. I'm sorry. Wait, where? Okay. You're Fine. trying to get, give everybody the whiplash. Well, I mean, yeah, they're, they're probably going to be very nauseous. At, oh my gosh. We almost died. Don't don't film and drive. Don't film the crash. Yeah, because if the cops show up, I don't want them to know it's my fault. Well, it's not your phone, so I guess that counts for something. That is true. So uh, I picked up this. This GI Joe with this awesome sketch cover. Uh, when we first saw it, I thought it was an original. I thought it was an original too. We we're kind of guessing. What do you think it's going for? Yeah. And what did you say? I, I was thinking three. Yeah, I think I said like more than that. If I'm not mistaken. Well, he's uh, when he does commission work on this size. Look, at that. look for uh, each character is normally a hundred bucks. I got that Snake Eyes for him for a hundred, but this is a more finished. It's inked. Yeah. Uh, like my commission I got for him is just pencils. And or no, I think mine's ink too, it just doesn't have the shape and stuff. And when I saw that, when we saw, not just me, but when we saw that it was just a book with, that's already got stuff on it. Yeah. I was it like, tells on the back of it what it's called. And I was like, oh, yeah, I right. bet it's, I was like, I bet it's about 30 bucks. Yeah, you're right. I was 30 dead bucks. On dead money. on the money. Uh, there it is. Yeah. The Larry Hama Collector's Edition. Yeah, and it's got that picture of him. That much is cool. I've always dug that picture of him. It's like his stock photo. It's pretty cool. So. That is awesome. So I was very happy to pick up. While you're up. doing Hall stuff, you got your book bag out. You can show them what else you picked up. Uh, I don't have my stuff. It's... Oh, you put it all in the... Uh, yeah. Well, today, what else did you pick up today? Because uh, it would up. all be in there. There you go. I picked that up. Well, a lot of, some of the stuff I got, I sent off. Oh, did you get a non... Over. Yeah, I got a non foil so I could read this one, and it is signed by. Um, the name's up there. No, it's Top Shelf. Top yeah. Shelf, Top Shelf. Uh, Elliot uh, Kalen. Yeah. Elliot Kalen. I just bought this because it looked really, really cool from Aftershock. Love me some Aftershock. Uh, Amanda Connor, Jimmy Palmiotti, if you're listening, go talk to Aftershock. We need Super Zero back, and they. The lady I was talking to, she's like, yeah, we're definitely interested in working with them again and getting that brought back. Please, for me. For yeah, me. just do it for Daryl. Yeah. I um, mean, he used to I, I rave he liked to me. It. I did. He used to rave to me about how good it was. And he was like, I'm going to let you borrow and read it. I read it, and I became an instant fan. It was hilarious. Yeah. It was outstanding. Well written. The art was amazing. I mean, just... Amanda Connor is bomb. Everybody knows that. I mean, she's really good. But just the, the those two together are the dream team, in mm -hmm. my opinion. They're really Connor, good. Connor, Balmiati, yeah. yeah. It, it's like it's the, the writing in it is it's like hilarious, but it's like cringy hilarious at times. Right. And I like how well they he like this man is in his writing is embodying. A, what 13 year old girl yes like how she thinks yes. it's spot on yeah like i raised three girls oh, i was like that's totally how my kids would have fallen <laughs> you know it's pretty neat i really enjoyed it so i mean the basic premise of it is, is this it's 13 year old girl she wants to become a superhero and she she goes through different ways to try to become one <laughs> epically fails every time yep epically just hilariously epically fails and we won't give you any spoilers in case you want to read it we're not telling you like yeah. how it ends because the ending is fantastic i did talk to the, the <laughs> lady at um aftershock again today and i was like look if we can get a, a super zero issue two the the basic cover and get one of those steel covers for that one of the best covers i absolutely love that cover it's the 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 Spider-Man kind of take off cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, it is so good. So hilarious. I was like, I would be buying at least two of them just because it's so, that good. I think it's pretty neat though. They're, they're, they did this just for the convention, those metal covers. I mm -hmm. thought that was really cool. I've uh, never seen a metal cover on a comic. I've seen a leather cover now and a metal cover and a wooden cover. I've seen wood, I have not metal. seen a wooden cover. You've never seen a wooden cover? I have not. I cannot remember for the life of me which book it was, but I have seen a wooden one. 
and then uh, Vamp was it Vampirella? Lady Death. Lady Death had yeah. the uh, leather cover. Yeah, it was that was uh, Coffin Comics, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta Bluto. Uh, is, I, I, I bought one of those. Mine is a is a red. Uh, What's well, black cover or brown cover? It's either black or brown cover black. with, with uh, red. And and I was like, it's really really cool. Go to kind of a right angle, perfectly. It's like, oh wow, it's a great picture on it too. Great. <laughs> but um, any other thoughts on Heroes Con 2022? Uh, well, I'm going to do a sum up. I mean, overall, it was an amazing experience. I brought way more books for creators than I was actually able to meet, which is a little disappointing, but it is time consuming. Like, if you can try to get all your creators in one day, then you, that's awesome. Uh, it didn't work out that well for me yesterday um, or Friday. Friday. And then Saturday was just way too busy for that. Like I literally would have had to do nothing but just stand in line all day for three or four folks. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted some time to walk around and see as much as I could. And I mean, it, it's crazy. Like you said, the amount of vendors that they've packed into that building, uh, it, it's almost impossible to sh really shop them all in three days. So um, overall, great experience. This is the first, I was talking with Billy about this earlier, this is the first convention I've been to where I've changed my outlook on collecting and thought about, you know, what is it I really want to be buying and I've still got my, my pet favorites that I want to get, you know, runs done of, Amazing Spider-Man, X-Men, you know, stuff like that, but I'm really now focusing more on buying the stuff in collections that you just don't see every day and I like I succeeded in that at this time more than I ever have. It was amazing. Like, I picked up a lot of stuff that I don't think I could just go anywhere and find, and I'm very, very happy about that. Um, the amount of, like, you know, original sketches and original art or commissions that I've picked up uh, in the last couple days, super excited about that. Um, I, I'm, as I said, I'm not as happy that I didn't get to meet as many folks as I wanted to, but the ones that I did get to meet, it was very solid. Great conversations, great memories made. So, you know, overall pleasant experience. Uh, rooming with this guy over here, uh, I, I want to throw him out of the window a couple times, but you know, I, I restrained. I did well, good. Uh, oh, you, you ain't gonna tell everybody that I was a bad roommate. Now I'm perfect. All I'm gonna say is he wouldn't have had to break the window because his snoring was shattering things all over the place. Yeah, I didn't even realize My that. My like, goodness. like that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, and like I told him this morning, there was one point, and I'm not joking, I mean, he had this long snore, and I legitimately thought for a second, because there's a pause, I mean, he had like a little gurgle, and then a pause, I legitimately thought, he may be dead right now. <laughs> and then his next thought was, damn, I get some good comics out of this. Yeah. He's, Take his keys like and his, his car. Keys right there. I'm good to go. Yeah. And I'm just gonna leave him laying in this hotel room dead. And, and about five seconds later, he snored again, so I, I knew he was okay. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can go back to sleep yeah, now. He's fine. Yeah, I can try to go back to sleep now. I'm sorry. But man. all in all, though, um, you know, hanging out, out with Ricky all the time, we, we, we bust each other up all the time. We but, do. you know, we have a blast. We do. We have an absolute blast out here. Yeah. Um, I told you today I loved you, man. I really do. I love you, man. I love you, man. Like, I, hey. I really enjoy spending time with you. And every once in a while, if you, it, it gets a little, like, you're just like, okay, I'm just like, Daryl, just calm down just a little bit. Just I can't break help it. I, I just have, a little bit. I have <laughs> my, my run of ridiculous puns and bad jokes. No. I can't not, help it. It's not. The, the escalator joke was phenomenal. That was pretty funny. That was a, that was a good one. I'll give you that. Yeah, I, I said, yeah, in the escalator business, it's up and down, but it's good. It, it's, it's good work. <laughs> yeah. That one caught but, me off guard. That was actually a good one. Yeah, he, so. he, he popped on that one. Yeah. But, uh, like, for me, for the three days, first off, blast. Absolute blast. Hanging out with, um, you, you'll see a little clip uh, that I shot going up to Andy's booth. Uh, Bonafide Comics. Have you ever seen You know, of course, I'm, I'm going to hype him up because... He is a really good friend, and he always treats not just not just his friends well. He's going to work with you, and when you walk away, you're going to get a good book or good books at a fair price. Very fair. Usually best prices. And 
So you'll you'll see his booth because I, I put a little little clip in here before this. This this video's gone a lot longer than I thought, but that's cool. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. mind it. I mean, you know, I'm good with talking comics and yeah. stuff. I'm fine with it. Uh, my my only downside again was um, not being able to get with uh, Connor and Palmiotti and and get a, a remark from them. I didn't just want a, a a signature on something this time. I actually wanted a little more. And so I, it, it's cool. It's cool. I, I like I said, I get it. I mean, I have to check their schedule and see where they're appearing mm -hmm. within the next, like you know, year before Heroes, and maybe we can try to go to that con. I would like to branch out next year and try to hit a couple more of the bigger ones. I'd love to be able to go to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Baltimore not, is usually in September, maybe October. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'll be able to do it's it this really year. Nice because, building up there, by the way. Oh, that is beautiful. I hope you guys can see that. You probably couldn't see it. But yeah, probably yeah. not. But um, I, I doubt I'll be able to do September because I'm going to be on vacation the first week of September, and mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm going to be able to take any more time off. But I thought it was usually the, the last week of September. It might be, but I, I only get the, the two vacations yeah. a year, so i got to, you know, I've already spend, got a plan. Spend now. one with the wife, I reckon. I reckon. Yeah, I just did my honeymoon as one of my <laughs> vacations, so, yeah. So, so anyway, as I was saying about my thoughts at the con. What? Were we talking about you? I don't remember that. <laughs> so, rudely and rudely, I, went, I don't interrupt people like that. Uh, you, excuse me? What? You don't interrupt people? That doesn't sound like me at all. That, that's uh, pretty much... Comment down below thing. if you think I would ever interrupt anybody. This is going to be the most comments you've ever had on a video ever. I, I'm, I'm saying if I get more than 10 comments, I will be stunned. But <laughs> y'all please but, tell him about himself, please. Uh, <laughs> hey, look at all. I don't, I don't, I don't. Now, more on with the con. Uh, missing Daryl Banks, not, not getting a, a Green Lantern sketch from him. Again, very upsetting, but that's cool. Uh, again, uh, he's really a good dude to sit there and just talk with, too, by the way. He was, I had never met him at a con before. He was awesome. Yeah. I really liked him a lot. Mm hmm. And I feel kind of bad I didn't get anything signed by him, but it was nice talking to him. And um, it's, it's so much stuff. Legitimately, the, one of our first thoughts is, where do we start? Yep. So we finally just go, all right, we're starting over here on this side and going row to row, row yep. to row, row, row to row, row, up and down each aisle it's, of that particular row. Because it, it was one, 20, two, three, it was four rows deep of nothing but comic book fun and artists and creators it's just amazing it, it, it's, it's like 20 24 rows like over so yeah it's, it's, yeah you get, it starts from aisle 100 and goes over to i want to say 23 so or 24 yeah because i was thinking 2400 so that'd be yeah, 24, 24 rows, rows yeah i believe and it's you got comics you've got uh, a few back people actually did have some cards which i didn't expect that um, anything comic related, you're going to find these things, which is awesome. You would think, as one book I looked at, I well, pretty much every single booth and nobody had it. Every single booth. Pretty uh, much. Batman 111? No. no um, I did find I, something I did more find popular one. that you would figure was there. The, uh, 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 Marvel Superheroes, what is it, 15, 20? I think it's 20. Oh, 20, uh, Doomsday. The, the, the Doom, Doomsday game. Yeah, the yeah. Dooms. Uh, Throw your hands in the air, Doomsday cover. Not Doomsday, Doom, Doctor Doom. Yeah, Doctor Doomsday. It's not Doomsday. It's not it's Doomsday. Doom. Doomsday it's is Doom. DC for those who are not paying attention. Oh so, um, I did find one really good copy of Batman 111 from 1957. Wanted way too much for it. <laughs> Hell, so, would have bought it anyway. <laughs> well, I know you would. I mean, you you and you, you and the uh, the uh, the ATM became best friends. Uh, a couple of them. I mean, he was doing wind sprints back and forth. And... Hey, there, I got these calves. Bam. <laughs> I mean, I don't shut up much, but I mean, seriously. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I, mean, I mean, it's so but many what? great, what? so many great books. Talking to so many of the vendors. Um, and again, the, the one cosplayer that we talk to a lot absolutely awesome and you see so many great cosplays so some better than others yeah but all in all really fun to see the cos i like seeing cosplayers out there some people don't because they're they will get in the way of 
of people getting to books and stuff when they're out in the aisles taking pictures. But I appreciate the fact that they're out there and doing stuff. So, you know, for me, it's cool. They're supporting the, the hobby. Yeah. And it's um, to a point. There's um, there's the people who take it seriously and, and pretty mm -hmm. much do it. As, I wouldn't say for a living, but, you know, yeah. they it's their craft. It's their art. They're at every big show. They're do. Then you have, like, your young ones that just want to be anime kids. Yeah. And that gets a little annoying. Because I don't feel like they're really supporting much of anything. You don't see them buying anything. All they're doing is just running around taking pictures of each other. That's pretty much it. To me, I mean, it's a, it's a little much. All but. right. Th there, there was one there that really annoyed me. <laughs> Which one? It was the guy walking around acting like he was Ric Flair. Oh. <laughs> and, and he would, like, like, have music playing. And he had a little microphone. He I looked, thought it was kind of funny. It, it was just to the point of just some some dude out there yelling for no reason. He got people's attention, that's for sure. And and what was funny was we saw, I don't know how many kids, like under 10 years old, dressed as Ric Flair. Yeah, I think it had something to do with one of the booths in the, in the show. Mm -hmm. and I think it had something to do with one of those. Like, it's like one of the charity booths they have Okay. There. I'm pretty sure it's what it was, but I can never really get a straight answer from nobody about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I just thought that was interesting. Like, how did Ric Flair, who hasn't wrestled in ages, now, I know, I, I know he's from Charlotte. We get that, but it's at the same point. I don't really ever remember seeing very many Ric Flair cosplayers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there were I just, like 20 of them there. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, but all in all, love the show. Love the show. Got some good books. Uh, a few of the books, the three books that I really wanted, I didn't find any really good graded ones. And um, a couple of them I didn't, uh, well, the uh, Alien Worlds, I ne didn't see a single one. Number four. Yeah, I asked a ton of people. Uh, I saw three Batman 111s from 1957. Two of them looked like they just been, like, eaten by rats practically. And one was, was probably 6 to 7.0 on it. And again, the expensive just, one. Yeah, it was just it was just over my over my price. That level. guy was I expensive was, in general. Um, yeah. He had that uh, Green Lantern drug issue I wanted, mm, and um, yeah, he was about twenty five percent over GPA and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I just couldn't justify getting it at that price. Yeah. yeah, it was the only one I saw in the con too, which was weird. Like, yeah. usually that's a book you see everywhere you yeah. go in these conventions, and. I, that's the only one I saw. They had the other, every booth had like the other issue. Of yeah, that. the you one know. you're looking for is the one that's just got the big needle, the syringe on it, right? No, I need the other one. Oh, need you the need one, the... I need the one with Speedy Crime. Well, okay, so because yeah. that, that's the one I feel like I normally see. See, and that's the thing. That's the one I normally see at the shows, mm -hmm. but I've never really found one that I was happy with condition because that square mound, mm -hmm. it, it really bothers me when there's a lot of splits in it. So yeah. I've been oh, looking yeah. for a better condition one and, um, I did not see many of those at the show. I think I saw one or two copies of the show and they were all lower, lower grade that I didn't want to you know, pay that kind of money for. So, yeah. I, I do have one other gripe about the show and it's not necessarily a gripe because I get it, it's a Comic-Con. Um, this year, as opposed to previous years, there were no vintage toy dealers. Absolutely not. Okay, I saw one guy that had a little bit, but I know it was nothing that you would have been looking at. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah. I, I think I know which guy you're talking about, too, but I know in the previous two or three years that I've been, mm -hmm. there's always been at least maybe two mm -hmm. really big toy vendors, you know, as far yeah. as vintage toys. And I've been able to walk away with something that, you know, I felt like I was happy with. Well, there was absolutely none this yeah. time around. And I get that's not a hero's thing. Um, they, they can't really control who decides they want to come sail there and, and doesn't, you know. I know they reach out to certain folks that's been there every year, but um, I, I do feel like there were, it, it's, the demand is there. It's not just for me. I'm not yeah. the only person, I'm sure, that was hoping that there were vintage toys there. But it'd be nice to see that next year if they could get a couple of vintage toy dealers in there. And, um, I think it's I think it's the weekend that they're having it now, honestly, because um, I know this weekend in particular they had the uh, big GI Joe um, thing in Augusta. Uh, it was the um, I guess it's Joe Fest. Yeah, it's what's called Joe Fest. Uh, so a lot of folks that sell toys went there uh, this weekend instead of going to Heroes. I actually saw a few of the vendors 
uh, online that I follow on Facebook that usually is at Heroes was not there this year and they were putting in their comments on the way to Joe Fest, setting up at Joe Fest. So I, I think since Heroes switched weekends, it's not Father's Day weekend anymore, it's the yep. weekend after, um, that might have affected who was coming and who wasn't. Um, so uh, maybe next year they can back it down another weekend. Uh, maybe the first weekend of July. Well, they can't do that. That's July 4th weekend. Yeah. I actually meant to ask uh, somebody there why they actually switched it. I was very curious about that. Well, I mean, me and you were talking about it, and I do feel like it was a good thing that they switched it because I did miss out on time with my kids for Father's Day because of Heroes when I decided to go. Um, you know, it, 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 but, my kids understood it was fine. We celebrated the weekend before, so it was no big deal, but, but my, my thought it's just the it point is, of it with a lot of folks. Is a, a lot of dads, I feel like they, they will have a little extra time, and maybe they can take their kids down there to the event. Well, a lot of dads yeah. our age don't have kids that connect with this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know? but at the same time, I'm just like I feel like I, I saw more uh, families like that, like father and son going to the Comic Con type of thing. There was a lot of families there this time around, but it was like whole families. Yeah, like yeah. it wasn't just yeah. you know son and dad or son and daughter or, yeah. or you know daughter and daughter or whatever or mother and daughter. It was a lot of, like whole families. We were seeing people with like 17 kids, like dragging them through the car. And I'm like, that yeah. doesn't happen often because that's a lot. Yeah. You know, to, get the, to be able to cart all them kids around through all those people all day long. Yeah, so, yeah, I would prefer, I, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter to me. I, I mean, I guess I prefer Father's Day because I'm not a dad. I don't have a dad, so it's all good with me. <laughs> but I, I do understand what you're saying. That when you have kids that are not interested in it, it's it, you can almost have to avoid going. And yeah. I, I get that. Oh, and um, getting to hang out with uh, Jay Peasy. I haven't gotten to hang out with him for a while because he he moved away, and um, it was great being able to just go through the con, hanging out with him, digging in some boxes with him. It's Did you been see a while. Him again today? Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. We hung out for a while today, and um, hopefully. We're going to have him back on the podcast soon because it's been a couple years since he's been on the podcast. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I think it's about time to make my epic return. Epic return? Yeah. I, I mean, hope he's more interested than you. That'd be great. I, if he's not, I'd be shocked. <laughs> I think we, we are, we're all, everybody's more interested in me. Uh, interesting. Not interesting. Interesting. Inter more interesting than me. Everybody's more interested yeah. than you. Yeah, and I'm they, only interested in you are. Yeah, and they uh, they can carry on a conversation better than I can, no doubt about it. No, no, we have some yeah, pretty good all, conversations. I will say that. It's all, yeah, you know what? It's all good. But it, it does. It is funny to me because we were talking about this. I don't know on the trip down. I think a lot, a lot of our banter back and forth that we find absolutely hilarious mm -hmm. never gets filmed. Like, yeah, you know, we yeah. film stuff. And it kind of like it's there a little, but it's not like when we're just driving down the road, things pop up. I wish we could just it, it's almost like we film a whole thing without even knowing we're filming it. It's, it's almost like when the camera's on, we go into uh, more serious mode without being overly serious. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just being mean, honestly. This is how I am all the time. But we, we, we like a little bit of our stupidity kind of gets filtered out. Yeah, I try not to cuss as much as I yeah. usually do. That's that's one thing. Dirty, rotten scoundrel. <laughs> I am a dirty, rotten scoundrel. I can't help it. And, uh, oh, man, um, I can't wait to stretch my legs. Um, what, what con is coming up next? Um, Salem, Salem the Vintage. Yeah. I mean, they might have some toy stuff. Uh, they usually don't. Yeah, they, that's true. That's true. It's really small. Just, though, it's it's tr a traditional small mm -hmm. to a uh, comic book. Is all it is. I would really hope that they take the floor of the arena this year. They're not going to. They'll it's, have that little room. It's a little room. Yeah, um, they, they don't want it to get big. That's the thing. That's one yeah. of the things I like about it is they want to keep it small. They don't want just, you know, to have to book 70 freaking tables. They, they want just, you know, the main group of sellers coming and setting up and just you know, everybody having a good old school comic show. I mean, back in the day before it was called Comic Cons, it was just a good old fashioned comic show. And um, that's what the way they want to keep it, which is nice. Still, like, only with like two or three bucks for admission, four bucks, yeah, something like yeah. that, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we can get uh, back to North Carolina sometime and hit up an inside pitch show. 
That would be great. I haven't been to one of those in like three years. That's uh, probably the last, last time we went. Last time me and you yeah. went was the last time I went to go to one. The one that they have in Greensboro is always my favorite toy show. I always find the best stuff there. Because mm -hmm. um, oh, that last time we went, I mean, you racked up on G.I. Joe stuff. That man, time. I got like a whole trunk full of G.I. Joe stuff from this guy that just did not want to take it home with him. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. So, what is in those boxes? I wonder. What is it's he's pulling a military trailer full of boxes or something. Now is he moving or has he got like dead bodies in those? What's going on? I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna. <laughs> that, that might be edited out. Might be uh, some kind of evidence at some point. So yeah, you're right. You don't want to really get tied up into something like that. that. That's great. It wasn't even me. It was my clone. You, the things you see in Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. So. Uh, anything else about the weekend? Um, it was great hanging out with Billy and Andy. Uh, yep. As always, love hanging out with these guys. Uh, got to see Paige and yeah. uh, their little one. Yeah, and she, the, the little girl, uh, can she be more normal? Thomas, oh, she's so freaking cute, man. Dressed up like what? a little princess today. She was, was Elsa, because it was her birthday. That's right. Yeah. yeah Elsa. It was so funny. And I was just like, look at this little girl. She's so adorable. If she corrected me, she said her name wasn't Elsa. She told me what her real name was instead. I'm like, but you're playing Elsa today. She said, yeah, but I'm not Elsa. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Great. So, uh, yeah, she's, she's very adorable. adorable. So, um, my, my thoughts, uh, out of, out of 10, I'm giving this like a, like an 8.5 because I missed those two sketches. That's it. Oh, yeah, well, that's your own fault. No, it's not my fault. I, it's not like I didn't, I didn't go by Connor and Paul Miani's booth like 80 times. The guy was like, come back in about a half hour. Go back in half an hour. Well, come back in about two hours. All right, come back in two hours. I don't know. I think you should have put your foot down and said, I'm not, I'm not coming back. You're going to do this now. Right now. Yeah. Even now. Though, even though they weren't there at the time. Yeah. You could have just got um, him to sign it and sketch something out You know what? You. That's what I should have done. But like, I got Connor and Paul Miani's. Uh, handler yeah. to, to do a sketch yeah. for me. What if it was actually like really good though? And I'll be like, hey Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That would have been hilarious. This dude's better than you. Yeah. You suck. Again, uh, uh, Mez is pretty doggone good. Yeah. I, I definitely need to look up some more of his work. I did buy one of his comics so I could go ahead and read it. One that he um, he drew and helped create the characters. I, I literally just realized I bought that stuff and I did not buy one. No, you didn't buy one of his books. You're, uh, more, you're more than welcome to read mine when I'm done with it if you'd like. Did you get the whole crew to sign it or just him? No, just him. I was going to go through, but I mean, he was talking about like she, he's the executive producer and this, that, and the other. I'm like, no, this is this sounds weird. I just want the guy who created this book and drew it and draw it. I'm good. I don't need everybody else. Okay, there's someone else I do need to mention there. I know we're we're almost an hour in. 52 Crap. minutes. Wow. But, I don't know why uh, talking that long. But there was a person there, and me and you kind of talked about it for a few minutes. Um, she, or gosh, I can't remember, Whitfield, or first, Karen Whitfield? She was... Apparently, the Bat Girl. Oh, you know, yeah. Back in the day, and I went. Me and I was over there hanging out with PZ and, and Caleb, uh, one of uh, Josh's friends, and we were just like. Uh, I don't they were talking, remember her being on TV. Here. Okay, hey, here's the story. She, uh, they used to tour. Um, Adam West and Burt Ward. Right. They would tour all around, and she went around with them. As and, and, and dressed up as Batgirl all the time. Uh, but it was never televised. No. They, it was well, I'm, like, sure, I'm sure they had interviews and stuff, but never a series or a TV show. So she was like never that. on the show. She right. just toured with them. Okay. Right. And, and she did not look like Batgirl from the television No, she show. was not Yvonne Craig. <laughs> no. Not Yvonne Craig at all. Yeah, because we but, looked over and I was like, that's not Yvonne Craig. Who is that? Why is she dressed as Batgirl? Because when you first said that, I was like... Was that that was Batgirl's yeah, name? Of course, that was Batgirl. And I was just like, "Who is this person?" And we googled, and you see some of her. Uh, she actually had her costume there. Yeah. And it looks like a nineteen seventies, nineteen seventies cosplay outfit. Yeah. 
but you want to go there and talk to her really sweet and really fun but i was but basically her her thing was she's recently wrote a book called fat west i believe uh check it out i, I actually i should have bought one and i would I like to buy one to see if she had some like tour and affair with adam west <laughs> that would have been fantastic that, that is not what we were hoping i mean you know oh, there, there's the place that uh Screwed us on my gas yeah, that time. Yeah, screwed you with the gas that time. Ch changed the price as we're there. Yeah, right <laughs> as I put my cord in. <laughs> so wrong. Still one of the funniest things that we've actually been a part of. Oh, uh, it's funny to you. Yeah. I just got frustrated with it. It yeah. made me infuriated. I was so mad. They never returned. No, I will never <laughs> stop there again okay. unless I'm about ready to run out of gas. On, on the way down here, I, I was kind of... I was, I, I knew we were getting close. I started stretching my fingers, and he was like, what are you doing? I was like, just, just wait. Just wait. As soon as we got there, I was like flipping them off as we were driving by. It's very true. <laughs> just because, you know, when I was getting revenge for you, man. I appreciate it. I yeah. was just ignoring them. I'm trying to let it go. I don't need that kind of anger in my life. Not when I'm around. He ain't letting it go. No. Because I will not let him forget that. No, because you don't let me forget nothing. Gosh, that did. Was you it Karen Whitfield. I feel like it was Karen Whitfield. I might that be sounds wrong. right. Yeah. I might be wrong, but you can always look it up on your phone. Yeah, I can do that right now. You can not just minimize it. That's a bit much. <laughs> just a bit much. So anyway, I just I just thought that was interesting because I was very <laughs> clueless as to who she was. But it, interesting story that she toured with them for uh, a few years, and she recently wrote a book telling of the adventures and going along with, with them and she was like yeah those those guys and a few others that were there they kind of raised her almost back in the day i thought that's pretty cool that's neat it'd be really cool to hear the stories that she has about adam west and Burke she was she day. was fairly young yeah when she had that role right yeah yeah i mean and i mean honestly she did not look that old i mean you look at that picture she looks like she's um in her upper teens maybe yeah so, that sounds about right. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, I mean, she's she's got to be in her seventies at this point. It did not look like it. I would think. I would say yeah. I would say 60s, 70s. Yeah, yeah. somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, she but, was she was she was a pretty nice looking lady. Yeah, I mean, it's just you can tell that she won't give on Craig. But yeah, she yeah. won't give on. Yeah. Uh, I just I just I just want to mention her because we were like, who is this person? And I thought, you know what, he needs to know. I'm telling one can. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So, you explained that to me because I might not have never heard that story if it hadn't been for this podcast. There you go. Daryl. There you go. This podcast. Right here. Darryl. Right right now. Daryl. If you get a chance, uh, check out our haul video that we, uh, our live stream we did. Uh, Yesterday. Well. Last night. Yeah. yeah. Last night as we're recording this, probably two to three nights ago as it actually gets uh, put out because this is going to take a long time to upload. All my YouTube Probably friends see. know it, an hour video is going to take a long time to upload. Usually a fast computer. No. I've done it on uh, other computers and people that higher speed internet. It doesn't speed it up much. Well, I heard if you hook a uh, hamster on a wheel up to it, it goes faster. That little guy will not run. I mean, I you mean, need to stop feeding him Cheetos. I mean, he, he eats. He eats. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, take some food away from him, dangle a Cheeto in front of his wheel, and he will go faster. Put a, like, put a carrot in front of the horse, and it'll, it'll, it'll run faster. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I need to start doing with you when we're walking places. Just dangle a donut in front of you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll walk a little faster. Donut. Yeah. Oh. And we did not get any Krispy Kremes, by the way. We won't near Rona. Yeah, because Roanoke's is the only... Hey, if anybody has a Krispy Kreme out there, just let us know because apparently he thinks the only one's in Roanoke. On our trip way, I don't think there was any anywhere close. And on our trip way, we were nowhere near Roanoke. No. They, they they have some in Charlotte, I'm just saying. Where? Yeah, because Charlotte's a big city. Have, we've, we've stopped there before. In Charlotte? Yes. No. Charlotte, North Carolina. No. Or as Junkyard Dog would say... North Kakalaka. Don't know where he got that from. No Makes one knows. No sense whatsoever. JYD. Rip, you are awesome. So, anyway, you know what? Well, we got to shut this down. It's been an hour. 
We can keep talking. It's fine. I can't Nobody keep, cares. I, I can't. Keep I can keep talking. You can and no, forever that, and ever what, and ever. That shocks everybody. No, it don't. I mean, my strongest muscles are probably uh, right here. My Your jaw, jaw muscles, yeah. My, my larynx over here is very good. Yeah, butthole very muscles. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, great weekend. It was. It lots was of, fun. Lots of fun stupidity. I appreciate yeah. everybody hanging out with us and talking last night. It mm -hmm. was cool. Yeah, a lot of fun on hope that. Hope y'all enjoy the video. It's uh, it's always a blast being able to get on here and talk to you guys, even though I'm talking to people after the fact. It's kind of weird. Or before the fact, I guess. Y'all are seeing it yes, after the fact. Yes, You're watching this uh, before he, he actually records. Yeah, whatever, man. I'm tired, okay? It's been a long weekend. You're lucky I'm I got, I got, speaking I got, any kind of weird here. I gotta put up with that. I gotta put up with that. I should be sainted at this point. You're unsainted. Man, that was his chance to talk about Slipknot. I love you some Slipknot. I, we, we may play some Slipknot. Speaking of Slipknot, that has nothing to do with the bands I'm getting ready to talk about. But I wish we could have stayed another couple days. Charlotte's having uh, Faster Pussy Gap, Motley Crue, uh, Joan Jet and the Black Hearts, and um, who's the other one? Was it Poison? I think Poison, I believe. I think Poison. It was a stadium tour they're doing. It was coming to Charlotte uh, Tuesday. It'll be there Tuesday evening. Man, I wish you could have stayed a couple more days. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen that show. I think uh, weekend, either last week or the weekend before that, my niece saw him in Tampa. Oh, I, I'm not I'm jealous, so jealous at all. I'm not jealous at all. Very you jealous. Jelly. I am. I haven't been to a good concert in years. It's probably been a good 15 years since mm -hmm. I've been to a, a really big concert. Um, I do a couple of smaller shows since mm -hmm. then, but nothing like that, like a stadium tour. It's been forever. So I'm, I'm definitely need to be putting that into my schedule somewhere. In the schedule. Schedule. Maybe I just need to quit my job so I can start doing more fun That's stuff. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. It works for most people. Yeah. I don't know. Why won't it work for me? 24 miles to Lynchburg, VA. Yeah, man. We only 20 minutes later than we thought we were going to be. Yeah. Um, Got to get over to see Ma. Uh, it's going to be close. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm not. You can at least uh, catch her the last. You know, 15, 20 minutes. Like, hey, what's up? All right, y'all have a good day. I mean, sometimes that's, uh, it counts. It you know what I mean? Might yeah. as well. Yeah. All right, I so. wouldn't have left early today if I didn't think we were going to make it back in time for you to see her. Well, we did have a really good lunch. Oh, my God. That was so good. It was, uh, it was Italian. Cacarachas. Go Cartoonery. I don't know, man. La Cataracha. La Cataracha. Catalonios or something. I don't Catalonias. Know. Yeah. That, but, that, some Italian name that starts with a C, but it was like bomb. It, that's marinara and um, uh, the stick things. The marinara sticks. Marinara People, sticks. I have to listen to this. Mozzarella sticks. Think. Mozzarella sticks. Yeah, those. My brain does not function it, it, correctly Yeah, they, they deep fried some marinara sauce, and then you have... But you dip it in marinara. And then you... They're you, marinara sticks. You, you dip the, the deep fried marinara into mozzarella cheese. That sounds like it wouldn't work it's, as well. It's, well, I mean, according to what you're saying right now. According to what Fred I'm Hall, saying. Fred Hall, direct edition. My good friend, he's he's like rolling his eyes, his eyes at us because... He always posts great food stuff at the beginning of his videos. If you're watching, Fred, I apologize for the abomination of what we're doing to food right now. It's fine, but anyway, <laughs> great mozzarella sticks. Those things were sticks. awesome. Oh, crap. And uh, they're going to wreck and kill us. Well, yeah, I guess, you know, I can get to the hospital, I reckon. Yeah. I haven't been well for a while. Might as well go visit her while you're going past. I mean, Lynchburg General, uh, I was very impressed with their hospital last week. The, the the cafeteria was amazing, so oh, maybe is. they're stepping up. It's just don't go to the emergency room right there because everybody uses it as an urgent care, and it takes forever. Yeah. It's I, terrible. I stumped my toe. Uh, I think my arm's broken. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. What? I, I got a cough, and it hurts my neck when I do this. Well, then don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, you'll be fine. That'd be five hundred dollars. Pay it. Pay it you Five hundred. Have you gotten a doctor bill lately? Oh my gosh. So uh, earlier in the year in January, I broke the end of my finger and pulled my fingernail off. 
and as y'all can see it's pretty gnarly still it's growing back now it's not that bad but um after insurance i got a fifteen hundred dollar bill from these folks after insurance i mean granted my insurance is not the best but it paid some on it i still got a fifteen hundred dollar bill i was there for 11 hours i mean that's just a little over a hundred dollars an hour so i mean that, that's that's fair man well that's fair i don't think that's, that's fair not, at all that's, all, that's all they did was take my fingernail the rest of the way off glue it back on and wrap it up and call it a day they gave me one ibuprofen while i was there one well that's where they get you <sighs> that ibuprofen was probably a hundred bucks yeah yeah i'd say i think it probably was more than that but yeah it was probably a couple hundred yeah mm -hmm. so <sighs> i think i'm gonna open my own emergency room up Start so, charging people like really what the, the call should be. So if you ever need comic books, go to uh, Ricky's Emergency Room. I think that's where they're going to be at. Yeah, we'll set up a comic shop and emergency room. Yeah. Don't bleed on my comics, folks. Go over there and sit. <laughs> uh, we got a squirter. We got a squirter. We got a squirter. <laughs> All over the, you know, Jazz has X-Men number one, Hulk 181 on the wall, you know, no big deal. They're bad. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, they're good to go. Yeah. If, if anybody has a, a Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos number 27 in the comments, let me know because I'm interested in one. Is that the eye patch? Yeah, the eye patch. And if you're still watching it at an hour and six minutes, give me another comment for that. Like, comment, I don't subscribe. Think are still all that. It at this point. <laughs> if, if this isn't entertaining people, there's not a lot we can do. We're just being us. Yes. I That's mean, this is, this is, hey, right, look, those little guys over there. That's pretty cool. Again, you probably didn't see them. Nah. I don't know why you think that they're going to be able to see something that Dude, you have no the way. window real quick. We, when we were going that one time, and there, there was somebody pulled over by a police, I turned it around. It's like, I hope you can see that. Perfect. Really? Yes. Huh. I was surprised, too. Hmm. Not going to lie. Because I thought I was going to have to edit that out, and I was like, wow, that but I will say this, I didn't have my uh, phone on the charger. This time my phone's on the charger, so when I turn, it catches, so you may not be seeing these things that are truly amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I really hope you saw that building uh, up uh, right after we got off of, um, actually, right after we entered uh, Virginia, because that building up on that hill was amazing. It was beautiful, yeah. I'm guessing it was someone's home. I don't know. I don't think it was a business. It looked like somebody's house. I was, I was like maybe some big like spa type of place. It kind of looked like some sort of mansion type mm -hmm. place. It was pretty, pretty sweet. Could that be Rock the Dwayne Johnson's house? No, his is in Charlottesville. Charlottesville. His yeah. um, his horse farm is yeah. somewhere on the outskirts of Charlottesville. I want to say like Albemarle part of uh, Charlottesville. Okay, on the way up there, we were naming some of his horses. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. I was, I was like, come over here and smack down. People's <laughs> elbow. Come here. I need you to your carrot. Hey, there's shut your mouth and there's no your roll. <laughs> Can you smell what my horse is cooking? Come here. <laughs> my favorite was, hey, there's Rudy Pooh candy ass. Yes. That's the best one. Rudy Pooh candy ass. Come over here. Come on. <laughs> Need, need, oh, need to brush your beautiful mane. Yeah, so if anybody else has any any names for uh, the Rocks horses, comments. Yeah, it was great. Comments. That, it's and, been a lot of fun. If, if you can beat uh, Rudy Pooh Candy Ass, you get a no prize. A no prize? A no prize. What's a no prize? You get no prize? You get no prize. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, we, we, we were just out there. Just, I don't even know how we come up with that. Were we talking about Black Adam, maybe? What are you talking about? When we start talking about the Rock's horses. Yeah, so we got on the subject of Black Adam, and that led to the Rock's horse form, and that led to Rudy Poo Candy Ass. Yes. <laughs> Little Rudy Poo Candy Ass. And shut your mouth! <laughs> Come over here. Yeah, I just want somebody to be like, hey, that what's that horse's name? It doesn't matter what his name is. That's Bro, his name. Yeah, it does. It, it matters to well, me what his name is. No, that's literally his name. That's literally his name. <laughs> Like who's on third? Uh, who's on first? Who's on no, first yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what his name is. That's Shoo. his name. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyway, after talking about uh, the
the rocks horses i guess we'll yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I landed on a high note. That is an extremely uh, tough level for us to get past. So we're going to. I don't take think off. there's anything else we can talk about Nothing. at this point that's going to be better than Nothing. that. I mean, people talk about you know comics and stuff, but you know Rudy Pooh candy ass. There you go. There you go. All right, guys. <coughs> any, any last comments? Uh, no, I'm good, man. I, I'm getting to the point where my throat's hurting from talking so much. I don't talk this much normally, so it's, it's no problem. Ah, it's no, it's serious. I, I, talk, talk I, I talk like this. I'm at home by myself for hours at a time, and I have the best conversations. He talks in his sleep. He doesn't stop. Apparently, that's true, and I had no idea. Dude never stops talking. Like he was in the bathroom <laughs> yesterday doing his business, talking to himself. Yeah. I couldn't hear him in there. Then how do you know I was talking to myself? I could hear you in there mumbling and talking oh, yeah. and laughing like you were laughing at yourself. Your own <laughs> jokes on the toilet. I wasn't on the toilet, but I was still laughing at myself. Whatever. You were in the shower <laughs> on the toilet or something. I don't know. You were in the bathroom taking care of stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? That part doesn't need to be discussed, but... We've now passed, uh, you know, Rudy Boo Candy has and gone uh, south. You tell everybody I snore like, you know, I'm a break Okay, we could have talked about, you know, sleep laughter like two hours ago. Sleep laughter. Sleep laughter. And now, you know, we've we've gone downhill after Rudy Boo Candy has the I horse. I don't know. Rudy Boo Candy has the horse. I, if I ever get a horse, I'm going to name him Rudy Boo Candy has. Rudy Boo Candy has. And I'm going to get copyright infringement for winging the Rock Johnson. <laughs> You know, he might come over and be like... Can I sign your horse? Yeah, can I, you know... He's, he's going to get one of those, uh, a brand. And brand it brand on the horse. On the horse, Rudy Bucani is. <laughs> oh, my God. It'll just be a DJ, actually. It'll just be Dwayne Johnson. This is my horse now. Man. I'm sorry, poor horse. Yeah. I'd like to apologize to what we have now done to you. But anyway... Hey, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank yeah. you for sticking around I, I for mean, all of our nonsense. I hope you guys enjoyed our basically do what we do when we're having fun going up and down the roads. Yeah. Talking about the cons, talking about this, that, and nothing in particular. Nope. So, anyway, you guys have an incredible day. Peace.